Jer Jer X Stitches. My name is Jerilyn. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, uh, and I am on Instagram. You can follow me at Jer Jer X Stitches. I believe there's Jer Jer underscore X Stitches. Um, it's the same as my channel. So um, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you for uh, watching and taking some time out of your day to check out what I I'm stitching. Um, if you're returning, thank you so much for your support. Um, I had quite a few comments last time, which was wonderful, so much more than what I've had in the past. So thank you so much for taking the time to say hello and let me know that you're out there and listening and kind of carrying on that conversation. Um, this is my channel about cross stitch. I do have some cross stitch today. I also have a little bit of knitting to share at the end in case you want to stick around and check out that knitting. Um, be happy to have you listen to and listen to seeing what I'm working on. Uh, I haven't showed my book of days in a while, so I thought I would start there. Uh, and there's a little bit of a method to my madness with that. Uh, let's see. So. I'm sorry, I'm still on balance. I'm still managing how to keep everything and check in and reach. Um, here's my book of days for March. I'm keeping track every day. It is Tuesday, March 21st. I did not fill in yesterday's, but I will catch that up. Um, but that's one of my goals for 2023 is that I keep track of my stitching every day, which has been going great. Having uh, this book of days has been really helpful. And then I actually have, like, um, I got my... Book of Days Coiled by, um, from Colorado Cross Stitcher, and then I ended up getting even more pages printed. So I have quite a robust like notebook in the back for keeping track of things if you are new here and haven't seen that before. Um, and so I, one of my pages here, set myself some goals, including some particular projects that I want to finish in 2023. I added a few more projects to that list uh, and then kind of worked out a plan for how I'm going to achieve those. Again, my goal being, I've shared this in the past, I found myself last year going straight to holiday stitching the beginning of November and really enjoying that like through the holiday time. So my goal is to try and finish most of these by the end of October. Um, granted, these are goals, these are plans, but like it's supposed to be fun. So if it's ever not fun, uh, I'll, I'll switch gears. But really what I'm trying to do is to manage the internal stress that I have around having lots of things that I love to stitch on, uh, loving the process, but also really loving the finish, growing my, my sampler wall. Uh, and so I feel better when I have a plan and I kind of have an idea of how I'm starting to get an idea of how long it takes, how, much, how, sorry, how many stitches I can get in in a session, how long it's kind of taking me. So I feel better having a plan and kind of knowing what my capacity is and kind of reevaluating that so that I kind of know when I can pick up a project or when I can't. Uh, and it just helps me feel like I'm not going to accumulate a ton of whips that I never get to. And then it, it's, it's, I, I personally have pressure. Some people can have lots of whips and work on them when they feel like working on them and that's fine. And that's great for you. But so just again, for me personally, it helps me feel like I'm, man, I have a plan to manage all of these things. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'll show you the projects that I have for my goals when I show you uh, my progress on them in, in the whips. But uh, I have one, two, three, four, five out of six projects on my goals for 2023 that are not finished. On top of that, my hope is that I can have 20, at least 23 finishes in 2023. So I have eight so far. Uh, getting those five up will be 13 and then between smalls and other things that I work on I'm hoping I'll be able to make up that other 10 to get to at least 23. I have some thoughts about that but uh, I think the big thing for this period of time since you've seen me is really again getting my head around the game plan. So what I did is I took the whips that I want to focus on with the exception of hibernation day which I haven't touched since last uh, February 25th. Um, I because I 
that's more holiday and I felt like I needed to feel out I have a plan for that one I try to stitch it on the 24th and the 25th of the month the other pieces that are not holiday associated I made um, myself a gold tractor so tracker sort of in the spirit of Whipco but broken down into manageable pieces because I felt like when I sat down to stitch, I wanted to stitch on, there's lots of things that I, many projects call to me, whatever I'm touching, I want to stitch on. And so in order to meet some of my goals, especially with reaching Skyward, I, can't, I have an idea of what I need to do for that one. But for my other whips, what do I wanted to kind of evaluate, what do I need, what pace do I need to set to reach my goals? And if I don't read, if I don't meet that pace, like that's going to be okay. But Kind of planning in my head like do i need to spend more time on like i'm making a decision about what i want to do do i need to spend more time on this piece or should i move on to another one essentially and like figuring out how to plan it in bite-sized chunks so that these large samplers that i love and i'm drawn to don't become overwhelming because if i'm overwhelmed that is a sure way to demotivate me from stitching on that piece and there was a reason that i picked that piece up and i wanted to stitch it because i loved it and i was drawn to it all, all that all being said to show you kind of oh sort of not because it's in a bingo board or I'm gonna use Whipgo numbers or anything like that but like on the premise of Whipgo and kind of piecing my piece piecing my whips out into manageable digestible chunks uh, I created I had some paper that was in these like squares and so I kind of mapped out what I thought I would need to do to get these pieces done this year. And so each one's a little bit different. Um, my Friendship Sampler by Ellen Reed Maximum Cross Stitch, that one has a weekly goal associated with it because that's what the stitch along is and it's a new start for me. Reaching Skyward, I have a monthly percentage that I'll mark off. Rejoice Evermore, Brenda Gervais, that one is the one that I, because I don't have it on Pattern Keeper, that one, like, is it going to be a page goal per month? Is it going to be like a certain number of stitch, like stitching sessions a month? I'm not really sure for that one. That one's a little bit more, I'm like feeling out what feels right for that piece right now. Uh, but I'm hoping for a page finish a month. Uh, but that piece is, it's not huge. Uh, but each page is quite a bit of stitching more than I expected. And it's on 46 counts. So that stitching you know, it's, it's a little bit slower because it's on 46 count. I'm loving it. Uh, but, and then dog's declaration, ink circles, that is a certain percentage a week, which is very manageable. Uh, and what am I missing? It's not all in order. And then Nevermore by Leela Studio. That one is a, I have that on Pattern Keeper as well. So that one is a percentage by month. Again, I think quite manageable for, for the speed of, for kind of how I figured out quickly I stitch. Again, plans are made to be broken. This is what's working for me now. Having a place that I can like mark off where I'm at and kind of try to keep track beyond just, you know, saying in the month view, like what I stitched on that day. Because what I was, I had initially started out like thinking, okay, so reaching Skyward, I'll stitch. I know what my goal is because I have it on Pattern Keeper and like I know that I want to get it done by the end of October. But I generally think that'll take me seven days and then this piece will take me eight days like this many days a month and then you add them up and they don't make 30 days and it's just complicated so uh, it was too much for me to say okay I have this much I've done it this many times already and I have this many days to go in the month and like kind of triaging what I should be stitching on Let's see oh I just lost a piece we'll see how this works out for me the next time you see me, this might be completely flipped on its head. But I think having a th something that I can check off with a goal and uh, like that gratification of checking it off and kind of having a separate place to reference like how many times I've stitched on it, I think will make sense for me. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I jumped right in without any like life updates or a plan for the video so I wanted to sh talk about my plans and kind of give you an update on uh, my uh, goals and how I plan to reach them uh, and then let's see what else has been going on I had stitchy group last weekend this will be my second stitchy group at my local uh, needle workshop 
Um, that was really great. Again, the community of Stitching with Fellow Stitchers uh, is really great. Um, so yeah, and we're just busy with like life and work and um, all of the things that are kind of like starting, like spring break is in a few weeks for my daughter. So kind of all of that end of the year stuff I feel like is starting to ramp up, work is busy. Uh, so I really have found stitching and a little bit of knitting that I've been doing um, to be really rejuvenating uh, with everything else going on. So which is why I'm here and why I'm doing it. Uh, so we're going to talk about finishes. I don't have any fully finished objects, what we in the community like to call FFOs. I grabbed the wrong piece, I just realized as I'm rolling one up. Um, I'll have to figure that out. Uh, I do have an actual finish. Sorry about the bending over. Uh, this finish is Heartstring Samplery. You see it's for copy. You've seen this piece a couple times if you are returning. Um... I finished this piece as a part of the Stitch Along, the OTGN coffee cell, off the Granita Lutz Arts coffee cell. Uh, I had a sign, I have a sign and numbered frame for it because I stitched it on, this is, ooh, now I don't remember if it's 36 or 40 count, Snickerdoodle from Evertote, Roxy Flasco. Um, I measured it and ordered it without I guesstimated the size based on the measurements and what count I thought I was using. And then I ordered it on from signed and numbered on Etsy. And then I got it and I was like, ooh, that might be too small. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna get it off the hoop. And like, I think it will fit. I like did, me I measured it. But then when I finished it and put it in the frame, like as a practice, it like touches the edge of the circle. So it was like a square frame with a circle cut out. Um, similar to what is on the pattern uh, but I got a size smaller because I thought my stitching would be smaller it's not significantly smaller to where I needed the smaller frame so I regrouped I ordered a size larger so I'll have to wait to fully finish this until that frame comes and then I know I'll repurpose that frame uh, I'm thinking even the T is for the the T is for copy is what I was gonna say the the cross stitch the rainbow T um, patterns. I imagine one of those on the right count of linen, I can hopefully get to fit in that four by four frame. And so that's my goal for that potentially, again, making sure that I can fit those in there. So, but I'm really happy with how this came out. I love it. Um, and I can't wait to put it by my coffee nook. So that is a success. I have actually two finishes to show you, well, two finishes to talk about my Stitch North Small. I started and finished since the last time we chatted. I can't show you it because I don't want to, just in case my recipient watches, I don't want to ruin the surprise. I will take some pictures of the finish before I, um, before I like wrap it up and take it with me to Stitch North. I'm going to the April weekend and uh, um, so that I can show it once the retreat is over and that person, whoever ends up getting my small um, has it. I'm still kind of processing what I want to do for the finish, kind of going back and forth about different ideas. Um, I'm super excited. I took it to Stitch Group so I was like, I have to show someone. I'm so excited about it. Uh, it's based on some charts, but it's like a recolor, a new different colorway and kind of reconfigured to fit the Stitch North, Stitch North vibe um, from what I understand it to be. I have never been before. So I'm excited to share that kind of jumping off point of a pattern with my own spin on it to make it work for Stitch North. Um, so yeah, those are my finishes. And let's see. New starts, is that what comes next? I'm a little, it's been a while, I'm a little out of practice. Have a new start. It is my friendship sampler that I talked about. So when I finish Sia's for coffee, the next stitch along with Caroline, who, um, hi Caroline, if you're watching, apparently she sometimes watches, which is like amazing because she's the floss tuber I stop and watch um, almost as soon as it comes out. Um, so that is Ellen's Friendship Sampler. Ooh, ooh. Oh, sorry, there we go. Um, so this is 
Caroline kind of set this up for the goal for herself, which I'm going to march with, is to get a certain number of stitches a week so that it can be done by the end of August. So it's 24 weeks of stitching. I did finish last week's. I have not done this week's stitching yet, but it's only Tuesday, so that's okay. Again, this is all rough. So technically I'm going Monday to Sunday, but like if I'm working earlier, working like, you know, kind of changing that switch just to make it work for my schedule and what's going on in my life that's okay too. Like there are no rules technically. Um, so this is my start. I love this sampler. Um, shout out to Ellen for oh, like helping a girl out in the middle of getting ready for her concert. Um, I was having trouble with Pattern Keeper and I had gotten the PDF download and then I got my kit from Evertote. Um, but I knew I wanted to use Pattern Keeper, which is why I did the PDF. And I just like Instagrammed her like if she's busy, she'll not see it until she has time to respond. And if she sees it and she has time to help me out, like I was in no hurry, I wasn't ready to start it. Um, and so she messaged me back right away and she's like, hey, I'm about to go on for my soundtrack. Like, can I help you? Can I I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up when I'm done? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you can wait and <laughs> so like do your day job because we all have to support our cross stitch habit. Like be your rock star self. Like. I can wait for you. Um, sure enough, 20, 30 minutes later, I had an email in my um, email for the PDF version or the, the Pattern Keeper version. Um, so thank you, Ellen, so much for taking that time um, in the middle of being a rock star to email me a cross-stitch pattern. You're amazing. Um, and it was totally unnecessary, but very much appreciated. So customer service is um, unequaled in that Ellen. Okay, so now I'm talking about it. Let me show you my stitching. Now it's not going to seem like a whole lot because I got some plans and I'm, I think maybe I'll share them. I was thinking about whether I wanted to share them or like wait and show you. Maybe I, if I can, ex if I feel like I can explain it simply enough, I will. So this is what I, ooh, the lighting is not great. This is what I have so far. So I have the whole um, this would be my right hand border because I like to start on the bottom right because of how I stitch. So I did the whole border, counted it like a million times to make sure it was right, came over across the top to get to the middle, and then came down and did the quote box. And then, oh no, I'm sorry, this is the alphabet, and then the box with the one over one quote. So this has uh, a variation where you can do the over one quote, or you can do the, um, there's a, over two version and I think that box is a little bit wider um, so and then I started the house so let me show you the goal of my focus so my focus is about 900 I worked out it's about 950 stitches a week which is um it's a long weeknight stitching very attainable typically for a weekend stitch for me for Friday Saturday or Sunday night um, which I know Sunday is technically a week, but I get during the day right on Sunday. Okay, so I'm going to pull a Nicola and like get close to the camera so that you can see. So this is my thought. I, I, Ellen has a version where in the, in the chart where you pull out both the initials and the people and then you trim it by two flowers and it just kind of like brings the whole bottom border up and it's just the house and the quote and the alphabet with all the motifs. Um, and so, and because these flowers alternate you, and the way the border is set up, it would be a lot of recharting. So essentially you can only pull up two sets of flowers together to make it simple. Um, I love the quote. Um, and I just, I wasn't sure about, I love the people. I want to keep the people. Um, but I wasn't sure about this section with the initials that I wanted to do that part. And so what I decided to do is to pull the initials out, move the house up, and then underneath the house, I want, ooh, that's like super close up chin face. Let's see if I can, I believe, there we go. So this is the um the rendering of the bigger over two verse happiness attends the company of friends 
this one I want to put underneath the house. So I want both the quote that says a big red house of brick and mortar, an alphabet, a pretty border, a berry bowl, some bricks and trees, and the company of friends like these. And then at the underneath the house, I want this one, which is happiness attends the company of friends. And then I'll put the, I'll put the people underneath that. Or I'll put it on the bottom and I'll put the people under the house. I haven't like gotten that far. So really my goal has been, again, to get the top done, get down to the count down to the house, get the house outlined with the grass so that I can then like make sure I have, I've worked things out correctly before I start filling in a bunch of things that I then have to pick or pick out or like re maneuver to make everything fit the way I want it to. Um, I have some other like minor ideas about some of the other motifs and things, which is 100% like what Ellen intended for this to be. So um, I'm very excited to kind of see how mine turns out um, compared to what her original is. So I also, I'm not like a Yellow Flowers fan. Um, I do like how like they tie in the, the border to the cartouches with the yellow, but like, I don't know. So still pondering hundred percent all of this stuff. So, oh, I also moved like this border. I think I'm going to move down underneath the house. Like it's, I'm going to work that in assuming I have room like somewhere down here. So hopefully that made sense. You'll see it hopefully come to life if you stay, stick around for more. So that is my new start and also a whip because that one's going to be a few month project, um, but I'm very excited about it. Uh, another longer term stitch along project is, oopsie, I'm all tangled with my scroll rods. This is part of the juggling is my ability, my show and tell for my project since I started using, I just haven't figured out how to get the scroll rods to work. So you probably, I can pull it out, but you've probably all seen this one, Reaching Skyward, Modern Folk Embroidery, Stitch Along for 2023. Someone finished this. I don't remember their name now. I should have written it down. Someone's done. Like they just couldn't stop stitching and they're done. And that's just amazing to me because it is the middle of March and it is 47, between 47 and 48,000 stitches, if my memory is correct. It's a lot of stitches. Um, so congratulations. It's a beautiful finish. This is where I am so far. I am stitching on 36 count. Ooh. Darn porcelain, dirty porcelain. Um, using Seize the Day and Amaretto by Roxy Flasco. My goal is um, I don't, I'm not following along with Jacob's chart because I'm trying to keep the structure and stitch like the motifs as they make sense uh, so that um, I'm not breaking up stitching in the middle of a section or a motif where then I. I end up getting out counting and I start the next month and I'm like, oh, this is in the totally wrong spot. So I'm trying to like stitch in a way that I can double check my work so that I can, especially because this middle part, like if one of these little motifs is off a stitch, like no one's going to know. But some of these elements in here, if this like structure stitching is off, it's going to mess up the whole inside and all those kinds of things. So um, when I think I started the month, I was like here. So I brought the borders down some and got like all this structure in the next month. Um, I'll start, this is the one with like that center motif. So I'll be able to kind of draw out that structure. So I imagine what I may be doing is actually getting more of that outline structure done and then working on bringing the borders down. So this one is done for the month of March and will not come back out until April, but it, I'm glad I have a little, I love it. Uh, but I'm trying to be very careful about getting burnt out because it is such a large project with a long-term goal. I don't want to get behind. Um, and so I know that because of Stitch North, I'm going to need to focus pretty intently on it at the beginning of the month. And so I'm glad that I have a little bit of a break before I've got to dive in at the beginning of April. Uh, so that is Reaching Skyward. Okay. 
just pulling them out here in the order that I grab them. So this piece, I think I had a little bit of progress on last time. I had touched it for the first time in a long time. Um, and this is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais. This is with the Roxy Floss Co. conversion uh, that Ellen did. And I heard she, Caroline mentioned she's back from her tour. So I've been like anxiously awaiting a floss tube from her. So Ellen, how was your trip? I want to hear about all your adventures and see what you've been stitching. Um, maybe she's been stitching things for us and so she's not quite ready to show us. But okay, here's her choice evermore. So this one, my loose thought probably for this month at this moment is a page finish. So I counted this page down here, this like little partial page that is kind of, it ends somewhere where my finger is and then down and like kind of like right here at the end of the T. Uh, that one I counted for February. And then this whole section to the house and this way and up to just below this yellow line here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is one page. So I just have the last little bit of fill in here that isn't done in that motif. And then there is um, initials here that I need to chart. So I'm not sure. I think I'll go back and do those later when I have all the satin stitching to do. So I do have a little bit of a head start on this middle page here with the house. The goal being that I had worked this initially to this point to like the cap fill in. So I probably will still do that. But I don't know. At, at this point, I don't see myself taking this stitch along with me because it's pretty wide. And it's also 46 counts. So like working this on this in a retreat setting or a stitchy group setting doesn't seem super practical, but we'll see. So uh, I think I'm going to go up next. So I am, let me make sure I orient myself right. So I'm, this is the page that I finished. So I have these two pages done and then I'm going to work up to the here. So this whole side will be done and I'm excited I loved these. I modified these a little bit. I just filled them in with the same, I think it's antique wedding dress, the white. I didn't love that Daisy. Daisy was the color uh, for the inside. Um, it was a little too yellow and not like brown, tan enough. Um, and I didn't have anything that I wanted to replace it with. So I just, um, just used the white instead. But um, I'm excited to get into these mo this big motif here. So where I'll go from there, I don't know. But that's kind of my general plan. So I think technically I'm counting this one done for the month. If I feel like getting back to it by then, it's likely that I will. But if I do, I'll work a little bit more and kind of maybe move over and keep working on the house or move up and get a head start on next month. We'll see. I don't know. But um, I'm happy with that progress and I'm going to count that as done on my little goal chart for now. This piece, I think I touch since the last time we chatted. I think I have. Um, this is, oh, I should pull out the thing before I show you the, um, this is the, my Ink Circles Dogs Declaration that I am stitching in memory of my Yorkie puppy who passed away. She was 14 years old last year in May. This is the chart. She loves squirrels so, so much. Um, and so this is going to hang next to, we have one of those frames that has a picture of her and her dot, her dog tags and her collar, uh, and her, like we got like the paw print and her ashes in a little jar. Um, and so this is going to go in our bedroom where, where the, those things are displayed. And I'm doing my own Roxy Flasco conversion. You can message me. I'll put my email in the description box um, if you would like that conversion or just curious about more details about that. So my goal for this one is 3% a week. Um, and I don't have Pattern Keeper handy, but it's not, it's like one stitching session, I think, essentially. It's enough that even on a weeknight, I could get that 3% done, probably depending on what motifs I'm stitching on because there is a decent amount of color changes with this. So I'm gonna work out a system for that. But right now I'm focusing on the letters, getting all of the words in if I can trust, if I can trust my counting. 
So here is where I am so far. So I have Pursuit of, and I started down here with the squirrels. I did put in a few motifs just to like help me walk over. Um, and this is another one where if I can fill in, finish the outside of the motif around the of, I can, that's all fill in inside there. I am stitching this. This is Hunt 40 Count Honey by Bestitch Me with Roxy Floss Co. Floss. So I really love this one. This one is staying out because I've spent a couple of night, three nights on Rejoice Evermore. And so it's time for um, where I feel like I feel like I'm in a good place with that one. So it's time to switch for this one. And I'm excited to stitch this, to stitch on this today. Um, so this is a piece that I, you haven't seen for a while. I haven't touched it since last year. Um, so I started this, I don't have the project information in front of me, uh, in October or November of last year. No, I didn't. I lied. I started it in July, uh, during a retreat, an online retreat, and I love it. And I remembered how much I love it once I pulled it back out. Stitchman Darcy uh, shared an update on it and he is coming in on a finish pretty close. If he didn't did or did he finish it the last one? I don't remember. So it is Nevermore by Lila Studio. My goal is 10% a month on this piece which it's only about 14,000, 15,000 stitches somewhere in there. So it really is about 1,400 stitches, which is one or two days a month, depending on how much time. So a weeknight or a weekend night, I could a weekend day night, I could uh, finish for the month in one or two. I think which is completely reasonable. Um, and I imagine with these goals too, as I get really close to a finish, I'm gonna want to like just stop and stop the rotation and really just stitch these. So this is where I am. So I think. The last time, I'm trying to orient myself, looking in the camera here. So I had like half of this triangle done. So I had all of these and like half of this triangle done. So I did this one, this one, and this one. And then I came up and I did this whole motif, mot motif and then this motif and this motif. And I started the words over here. So, and this is another Roxy Flasco conversion, sort of based on Caroline's first conversion of this, that she then, re I know she reworked it last fall. I already had started and purchased the flosses, and um, I love her conversion as well. My conversion, my her, her first conversion is not mine. Her first conversion used Morticia and Vixen. I don't remember which one she pulled. I feel like it was Morticia she pulled from the newer conversion with the thread packs and I just, I'm in love. I had already started with it and I'm in love with like that, that floss was one of the reasons that I fell in love with that piece. So you can, you notice that the bird is outlined and not filled in. This is a 40 count French vanilla, I think by picture this plus. Um, so that bird is saved for retreat or fast stitching for when I need that um, to be available or if, I fin if I'm at the point where I need to finish it up, I will do it. But So I'm saving that for easy stitching because those motifs are great, but they do take a little bit of concentration. So, all right, one more finish to share. It's a holiday piece, technically. This is in the bag that I made for the stitch along. Um, the, shoot, sorry, the Evertote Holiday Collaboration. Um, so that was the Evertote Roxy Floss Co. Modern Folk Embroidery Holiday Countdown Box that was released. So she, we ordered it this time last year. Uh, we waited until our boxes arrived in October. We scrolled them away and we started opening them in December 1. There was a floss and a little tiny piece of a pattern that we then stitched all throughout the month of December. Mine is up here in this teal frame here. It was a Frisian band sampler from Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. It turned out lovely. Um, and then the extra flosses from the box were put on the Evertote website so you could grab extra if you were so inclined. I had lots extra left over. Um, so the whole point of me telling you all about that is they're doing it again this 
this winter uh, in December. Boxes are on sale now. They've been on sale, I think, since March 1st. Does that seem right? Doesn't matter. They're still available. Caroline got a lot of messages from people like in December when pe we started talking about it, like, how do I get that box? She didn't have any then. This is a small hand dye business. Uh, Carrie from Roxy Floss Co. She dyes all of the flosses and the linen. You know, Jacob's got to get his chart together. The Evertote group has to get everything boxed and specially packaged, mailed to us. Jacob weekends are coming in October. So there's like all the, they're doing all the things. And so order now so that your future self isn't upset that you didn't order now. Um, it, it's worth every penny. It was so fun. It was probably my favorite, um, other than spending time with my family, the, my favorite thing, my favorite stitching thing in December. It was so fun. Um, and stitching along with everyone. So that's my plug to go on the Evertote website and get your box. The last day on the 25th, we had a present from everyone from Jacob. Jacob charted the Stream of Winter Garden, um, and the goal was to um, use our leftover flosses and kind of, you know, in the spirit of our ancestors of needlework, use what we had to make it our own based on, on the chart. And um, I did go with this similar color palette of the teals um, and the reds that uh, isn't what was in like the chart for the thread for the thread conversion or the thread called for threads um, so just kind of making it my own with the flosses from the kit with the exception of one that I need for the birds because I want to make them blue but uh, this is this has been my um, on the go piece so I worked on this uh, while we were in for procedure for my father-in-law and then um, I worked on it at the stitch group this weekend. So that's how far I am. I've got that whole bottom border done except for maybe some snowflakes that were sprinkled in there. So this, uh, the, the little, the light green part here of the flower was meant to be the off-white. I don't remember what the color was called in the packs. Um, and I wanted to make it that light green instead. So now the snowflakes, I have to decide if I want to keep them that cream color or if I want to use the green to match. So. But I love these colors. Love, love, love. This, like, black, what you probably see as black, is actually, like, a super, super dark teal called Deep Dive. I love it. So I am still hoping that Carrie can work out her magic to, so that we can see that color again. Because it is, like, my favorite dark, almost black, from Evertote. I do have a couple of backups. I... I grabbed at least a skein, if not two, when the extras from the, what was, what they didn't go in the boxes were available. So that's Dream of Winter Garden. And those are all my, um, lips. I do have a little bit of haul. Sorry, I'm just, like, reorganizing my life. Um, to share with you, some of it is market stuff. Some of it is not. Um... I have the March um, Roxy Floss Co. I belong to the, I've belonged to the Floss Club since the beginning. So I have March's Brights and Neutrals is what I get. They have the new floss tags. Look at it. It's Roxy. So these are the Brights. Um, and this dark color Lady Luck is what it's called. It's like a little greener than Darkest Sage. It's really pretty though. I don't know why I like these. Like, I think it's before I started cross stitching, I didn't realize like all the variations of one color. Like black isn't black. It's like all these different shades as an example. Uh, and so I don't know. I'm just really intrigued by like, oh, it's like a dark off black and then you look really close and it's like no it's like really green so I think that's why I love those is and because you can play with the color of your linen to really pull and the other colors you put with it to really pull that out it just makes it really fun so to me and then here are the neutrals look at that variegated one in the middle it's gorgeous so I'm a fan of blues too so these are great great colors there's a couple here that are like speckled now that I'm looking a little closer. So I'll take these out and organize them and get them in my floss stash, which I'm still needing to shoot a video of how I've organized my overdyes and then my DMC. I will do that. 
sometime. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, I also snagged some new linen from Roxy Flasco, who oh, she also has her new logo on the tags. So this is 36 count cherry cobbler. The 36, all I could get is, I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, that's better. Um, all I could get was an like eighth yard so far. I think this is like a standard, I mean, then every dye lot's gonna be a little bit different, but this is like, I think a standard color now. So uh, cherry cobbler in 36 and in 40. So you can see how the different counts absorb the dye a little bit differently, but they're both just gorgeous. Carrie is a master. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. Um, there may uh, here be, here be Dragons by Modern Folk Embroidery is in my stash. I have a different Atomic Ranch that's similar to this. Uh, Carrie dyed a cherry cobbler last fall that was similar to this. I didn't get, I didn't get any um, in the, she didn't have any in the count that I wanted when I went to grab some for Here Be Dragons. So um, I want, I want, I found an Atomic Ranch that was similar. So now I have to decide if I want to go back to the Roxy or if I'm going to do stick with the Atomic Ranch. Um, and it's kitted with charcoal or chalkboard. I'm not sure which. So I'll have to kind of see how it shows up on here. Uh, I think it would look really great with a neutral, like a light neutral um, too. But that makes me nervous because stitching with like off white and off white can be difficult to get your stitches to look good. And I've all, I think in my head I've pictured black. So we will see if deep dive showed up in the available flosses I knew I'd have enough I would probably choose that to go with this floss is assuming that it shows up well okay and then 36 count I got I'm a 36 or 40 count stitcher I chose 36 in this Coco Loco a quarter yard uh, I think I chose 36 because I was a little intimidated by the darker linen and I thought 36 would be a little easier to see. This one has no plans. This is going in my stash and I know I will find the perfect thing to use this with eventually. Okay, and then we have Market. So I did some pre-order through my local Nina workshop and I did some pre-order through, through Abby Tapnot. Um, I was a little, to be honest... Full disclosure, my LMS is great. I was a little bit nervous that the things that I wanted to pre-order, I tried to focus on pre-ordering things I didn't think I would be able to get later. So for example, the Beth Twist floss holder, horn book that her um, husband makes from the trees on their property that fall. Um, this says, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I wasn't sure how many of these would be available and I wasn't sure that my local needle workshop would prioritize getting to this vendor over some of the more not I mean heartstring sampler is super popular I don't mean it to sound like that but the more traditional shops so I just I felt like because Abby was doing like pre-orders and probably like communicating I imagine with Beth to make sure that we kind of had these in place um, I felt more comfortable going for certain things going with someone who I knew was working directly with the designers to, to snag their pieces before market. Um, so that is that one. And then I did order some of the tea time things. So come on friend, there we go. The tea time scissor fob with the tea time um, floss holder that goes with, so there's enough holes for the floss pack. And then these are 10 yards of Trinway silk. So I'm excited to try out these silks and do the small. So if you don't know, Cross Stitch the Rainbow, um, 25 designers uh, chart, they, all their charts are the same size. Uh, they're all, they all pick, they pick a theme. It was tea, obviously. Uh, and so then they all use these colors. So they have the palette and they all, their patterns all stitch with those colors. So here is the needle minder. And look at the back. So the the back holder also is a cute, adorable little teacup. So I thought that was really fun so that um, when it goes on my board, right, I can put them both on the board, like my, my needle minder board, that I, metal, metal board that I use to store those. Um, 
Sometimes I do put a magnet on these as well so that I can pop them up on my board when I'm not using them. But these will probably go in a project bag to do some small stitching. So I'm still, I really loved having the coffee sal as like a one or two threads a day before I do like my big stitch for the night. I haven't incorporated that into my stitching practice since finishing um, CS for coffee. So my hope is to get back to this. In my head though, I have another small that I should finish first, but it's a part of a series too. I don't know what my problem is. Um, overthinking things apparently is the problem. So along that same line is I picked a couple of the tea time charts. Some of them I will probably get or like as PDFs. Um, but I snagged this Manny Donna one because it, look at, it's in like knee, ugh, knee. It's a needle book and a tea like holder. It has like pockets in it. And then I got the finishing. So the finishing set has the wool, a pin, and then these coffee charms. And then, so I still need some ribbon and the rickrack and then some fabric. So the felt is only enough to like, you can see like to make the scissor pocket and then make the little tea pockets. Um, and so I need backing fabric or like fabric, but like a fabric cut for the rest. So I'll probably see what I have or take this to the fabric store and pick out a fat quarter or something to finish this. But I think I do want to finish it like the finish it like the finish, like suggest, like the designer suggests. So the fabric is cocoa by weeks, but I think I have some fabric that'll work for that. My other tea time that I got off right off the bat, especially because I was ordering from Abby Top Knot, is her a top notch cup of tea. I love reading, though my stitching has taken precedence. I've kind of worked on um, incorporating audiobooks into my stitching, and I really enjoyed that. Um, so this is the one that I'm thinking I might be able to, I don't know, there's a couple that I really like, so I might be able to fit this one into that circle frame I talked about, um, but it's kind of a square shape, so maybe I won't. Um, there's a couple I think that would be a good option, so I got that pattern, and so those will kind of like go in a bag all together and do, the, do its thing when I have some smalls that I want to stitch. Um, from Needlework Press, they came out with a few things. Uh, what was interesting was there, I wasn't able to see them. There was no way to pre-order that I could find. I think it was just kind of you grab it. So I did do a, my, I, I reached out to my LNS for this one and they were able to get all the pieces I requested. Um, so this one, it's a clear box and says stitching tools. So I snagged one of these. This is really great. Um, and it fits 103s. I don't remember. Someone measured. I feel like they said 25. That seems like a lot, but maybe if they're stacked, because it is like the lid, you know, you can stack it higher than the, the, the lip when it's open. Um, so I'm excited to use that. Probably will use it in a project for 103s. And then um, this is um, an eyeglass cleaner. Uh, from one of their, I think this is Mary Carr. I don't want to misspeak. Mary Carr, yes, from Needlework Press. And I love this sampler. It will probably be purchased and stitched at some point in my cross stitchery. So that's a little eyeglass um, cleaner uh, in a little case that can go in your wallet or your purse or your stitching thing, whatever. Um, so that was also, like I said, at the Needlework Press booth. And then they had these paper, like stitching related paper things. The thing that I, and they kind of came out over a couple days and luckily I hadn't gotten to my needlework store until they were all out so I could request them all. So this first one, I'm going to try to show you this little picture of the close up. It's a kit for stitching, or not stitching, cutting and punching and making that little paper bowl. So it comes with the paper that you cut out and then it comes with some other like little like a few fm ephemer whatever that that word that i can't think of ephemeria f what you guys know what i mean um in the the cute ribbon 
to tie your little corners. So essentially you cut out this heart shaped thing, you fold it, you punch your corner, you, you punch not with a hole punch, but like with a awl or like a, the sharp end of something, you punch your holes in the spots. And this is actually, they like, um, they scanned the antique that they found to get the image. And then, um, so you can see like the actual little holes that the, the artist used to punch um, and run their, the, the, um, the ribbon through. So I'm excited to make that. I thought that, I just thought that would be fun. Oh, it's a needle packet. So there's a couple projects in here to like paper projects that are stitching related, which I thought would be fun. And I don't know, I haven't finished. I'm behind, like when I, the people that I follow on Floss Tube, when they put out a new video, I hit the three dots in my subscriptions feed and I um, add it to my private playlist that I call Catch Up. <laughs> Cause that just makes sense in my head. Um, and so those are where my videos go. And then as I watch them, I like pull them off my list. Uh, and so needless to say, I'm not caught up on my floss tube cause I've been listening to audiobooks. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and so I don't, I haven't seen anyone show these yet. And they kind of came out like right before, like the week before they came out really close to market. So I don't know how many people got word of wind of these. This other one, it's a paper and thread pin boxes and button card. So again, it comes with these printouts. You cut these pa these papers out and then it came with match boxes so that you cover the match box to look like a p with this um, vintage pin box graphics. And then you can also make a button card and use antique buttons. I had asked for the antique buttons, but I think in my list as it got communicated, via a list and then to a text. Um, it might have gotten missed. And I think I have some of my grandma's vintage buttons that I can go through if I want to make that card. So that would be fun to kind of um, kit up and make like a little, even for like a exchange or something. And there is a pattern on here for stitching. Um, I don't remember what they said, but there's a little tiny chart in here for, for stitching as well if you want to add something to go with it. Eph ephemera, eph how do you say that word? These are replicas of antique ephemera from our collections. They are intentionally laser printed on regular weight color copy paper for ease of application directly to notebooks, boxes, cards, etc. We recommend PVA glue, yes paste, or co 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 -cina, co co I don't know that word, adhesive. Antique button packs are available for this single button card. The last paper thing is actually the thing that I saw last was the least excited about and then got it and was like, this is really cool. Um, and it does say that like there's permission to reproduce it for your use, meaning we get like one pattern for cutting out, but I can photocopy it and then use that instead of like ruining it. Does that make sense? Instead of ruining it. So it is a perforated paper portfolio. So this is what the antique looks like. So it's perforated paper. And it's got stitching on all four sides. Um, so this is what the what it looks like laid out open. And then you like put, it's hard to see because the background is similar to the inside of the, the folio. But essentially you like put all your little trinkets in there and then you fold it up and tie the ribbon and it all stays closed. And um, so I thought that was be, that would be fun. So it came with the ribbon and the wool to go on the, the bottom of the folio. And then this, there's only, and then it came with the chart for the stitching. There's only stitching on all four sides. It's trinkets, paper, treasures, and notes with the flowers there. And my ribbon is dark blue, which is perfect. I prefer navy over baby blue. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and so this is the one I think I will probably work, stitch um, or make first. Maybe, uh, maybe I take that back because this actually requires stitching. The other stuff is like cutting and gluing. But then I'm like, what if I cut it out wrong and I make a mistake and I'm not, what? whatever. And then it actually, so it comes with the patterns and everything. And then it came with some like thicker, almost cardstock like paper. And what's really great about these is you can, it's just little extra things that you potentially could put inside your folio. But what is really fun is they printed the back. So like the back has pattern on it in for, um, just to like make them not double-sided, but to have something other than just plain on the back of them. 
So you can put these in your folio or use them in your um, needlework presses, what makes the book of days. So they talk about using these in your book of days. Um, so this is really fun and something I could even see uh, it um, making one for myself and then potentially like this would be a really fun small to make for someone and then like put little things in it uh, for an exchange and it requires one pack of perforated paper. They recommend antiques. Antique Brown was used in the model. It's cut by Mill Hill. It's 14 count perforated paper. Uh, and so it takes both sheets that come in that pack to cut out everything that you need. So I was really excited about that one. It was a good find. Um, and I don't know if those sold out at market, if they're still going to be available, if they're going to make more, all those kinds of things. Um, but I definitely wanted to grab them. I did not see that my local needle workshop picked those up in their stash for, you know, what they brought home with them. But okay. Ever, of course, like everyone, these apparently are selling like hotcakes and they're like on their third printing of them to like meet the demand. These are really fun. I actually, while I was waiting for these, I went through my old one a few weeks ago, not old one, last year's. There's a lot of things in here I would stitch. There's a blackbird in here. There's a lot of fun things like smalls um, for gifts and those kinds of things. Um, so really fun. I love the squirrels from uh, the Blue Flower Jenny. So, and I, you know, to be honest, like I like to bake and cook. I didn't even pay attention to the recipe. I was like, who's in here? What's in here? Um, so I probably need to go back through and like actually look, but I don't keep this in my kitchen with my cookbooks. I keep it in my stitching pattern stash. Uh, okay, just a few other things. Let's see, uh, from Top Knot, I ordered, I saw this and this was like a late addition to my market haul, but I love little, I love reading. I love, there's certain classic literature things that I love and Little Women is one of them. So this is from, is this Posey? By, it's called Posey by Alicia Paulson, Patterns to Kit and Stitch. This is Little Women. So it's the March House with the four March sisters. It says Little Women. Just a really sweet, small sampler. Um, I'm a fan of... Um, I'm a fan of, like, quilt motifs and cross stitch. Like in Rejoice Evermore, I loved stitching those um, stars. So... It's a really great touch. And then I don't know how this got in my cart. I think because I liked the quirky deer and the colors in the sampler, this Kathy Barrick, MA Reeve 1824. This is going to go in my stash. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to buy anything. I wasn't going to immediately stitch or that I didn't need to get a hold of because I was worried I wouldn't get it later. Like this will totally be uh, available later. But it's super cute and I love it. You can stitch it in NPI D or DMC. Is well, you can stitch it anything you want. <laughs> it's charted for NPI or DMC. So I love the little quirky dealer and like, are those lions? Are those dogs? Are they cats? Who I don't know what those are, but they're adorable. So maybe I should read. Uh, I should probably read. It's an exact reproduction of an antique or Scottish sampler, with the exception of the colors. She has both versions, her, her color version and then the original, so that if you are a sampler, reproduction sampler purist, you can still do that. Neil and Flax Fragile is the um, model, fat linen, and there are inconsistencies in the border, so be careful with that one if you're going to stitch it. Read the, read the, 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 read the things. I'm... I understand wanting to make them exact, how the girls stitch them and like preserving that history, the imperfection. Um, I also, I think I haven't done a ton of re true reproductions. My blessing sampler that I did, I think I kind of picked and chose what I wanted to change. Um, if I could clearly fix the mistake and it like helped it make a little bit more symmetrical, I did that. So I'm not a purist. Um, I just stitch how I want to stitch. 
October house. This one uh, jumped in my hands when they came back from market. I saw it a couple times and I almost put it in my cart and then told myself I didn't need another Christmas stitch. Um, but sorry, I was trying to get the price tag off of it so you can actually see it. Um, this would be perfect for my Roxy Flasco silks. Like those colors, those teals again are like perfect for it. So this is Vintage Tree by Robin Sample, October House Fiber Arts. This is a super little, quick, small. I can see it as a pillow or a flat fold or something. Um, it is 105 by 87. So it's a little bit bigger. That tree is, that tree's got some stitching in it, but it's like right up my alley. It's like the right colors for what I'm drawn to. So that hopped in my, in my, it's not in my cart, in my hands. And then I saw this, um, not this last Sunday's video, but the Sunday before Brenda and Laura had been sent, um, from Cecilia, the heart and hand cuckoo sampler. Uh, and it's, I love the sampler. I love the layout of it. It's also just adorable that it says cuckoo, like a cuckoo clock, but also because they like to laugh when they say crazy things and then the clocks chime in cuckoo. For Brenda and Laura, who inspire creativity and connection in our community. And she has a picture of another one of her samplers on the back. And it did come with a few beads. So the berries on the branch are beads, not French knots or stitches. Well, so thank you, Cecilia, for not making me French knot because my French knots never look good. So this is another little fun small that will be an easy quick stitch and I'll probably use, I don't know what I'll use, but Roxy Flasco has some good greens that I have in my stash, um, but it doesn't have to be green either. It might be something totally different. And I think I'm halfway through Brenda and Laura's um, episode from this last Sunday a few days ago. Laura finished this. Go Laura. Like for being a serial starter, she got some smalls done this last couple weeks. So that was fun to see. Okay. So that is all of my cross stitching to show you this week. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you want to head out before I talk about my knitting, thanks for stopping by. If you want to stick around, I have just a little bit of knitting to show you. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's do a quick little knitting talk. So last time I chatted with you, I talked about wanting to start a, a finger weight sweater tee, which I know, like, I know how long it takes to make a pair of socks. So to decide to make a whole shirt out of finger weight yarn is a little bit bonkers. Um, but I just, I fell in love with the, um, the, the tee. This pattern came out in 2021, I believe, um, and I fell in love with them. Um, sorry, I'm just noticing that something is a little like, I think it's just where my increases are. It's like puckering a little or like, I'm working on my tension essentially with color work. But anyways, so it's the Sea Glass Tea um, by Heidi and Lana. And it's meant to be, to use up all your like extra bits for making socks and all those kinds of things. You magic knot, join your thread, your yarn, and you switch. It's a one by one color work. You switch every row, both colors is how the pattern is made um, to be. But you could obviously stitch it however you want. I have a pair of socks that um, I, they're called the Crystalline Socks. Mm, and I meant to look, I looked and I don't remember again the designer name, but um, they are also scrappy socks that I am knitting. I started in December and they use, it's a one by one color work, but you do a solid row so that you're essentially getting like, you get like a solid row and you pull because you're doing one by one before and after. It's almost like you get like these little stripes that are like, well, I can show you. So you get like this pattern. Um, and so I started this, it's a top down. So this is my neckline. Um, I did some German short rows. I chose to do it. it. It's a little, I'm a relatively new knitter and it was complicated enough that I didn't trust me myself to do it in color work and add that complication. So I did, and it, that pattern says you could do either. So I just left it in the, the, um, the collar color uh, and then I've got a decent amount of work done 
So this is still like way up here. Um, but it's coming along fairly well. It's I'm at I'm increasing quite a bit and so I'm finding like each row is a little bit longer and longer, but I found my groove with I modified um the way that I'm holding my hands. So I'm a continental knitter. So I typically knit like like this. Um and I found that if so some people like I, the double wrap is what hung me up with the way people have shown that they do color work when they continental knit on one finger. I've tried the Norwegian thimble. It does not work for me. I've tried it for long enough that I've been frustrated that I know that it, it doesn't work for me. So what I do is I split. I do a double wrap with one color and I split this other one. And then once I get this one going like tight again, it it flies pretty good and I can like grab it with my back needle. Before I figured that out, I was like using these fingers to like pick and choose and it was just really slow. So um, I feel like I've started to get my groove with that and things are going better. Uh, I need to, uh, I feel like I've worked enough that I need to like change my <clears throat> cord size again. Um, to give myself a little bit more room but when I first started the neckline like this cord was even too too big and um, I didn't it was fussy like having to magic loop on something this big it didn't need to be magic looped um, so that is my progress I've been trying to just do a, at least a couple rows um, my neck's been bothering me a little bit I'm sure it's my posture both with knitting with stitching and at work um, I'm in front of the computer so this has helped, like working on this has kind of helped giving me, give me a break when I um, have cross-stitched long enough that I just, my neck is starting to bother me. So yeah, just give you, I'll try to give you like a close-up of how that's working out. It'll look, it'll work out a little bit better when it's blocked and I'm sure as I continue to work on my tension as I've changed techniques and kind of, and things. So and then again with like the increases, it's going to look a little funky because there's like every one of these markers is an increase as you go around until you get to, I think like once you get to the sleeves, it's just straight from there. So I can't confirm that. I haven't looked at the pattern that far ahead. It's one step at a time for me kind of situation. I do um, use my pattern and um, a friction, excuse me, a friction pen to like mark my rows for each set of instructions to help me count so that I remember where I am from time to time because I've been known to just drop my pieces for a while and not remember where I'm, where I'm at or like thinking I have done more or less rows than what I have. Um, and so I'm using, I didn't tell you, I'm using Emma's yarn in Farmer's Market and I don't remember. I think this is a crazy beautiful color. Maybe it has a name. It is a crazy, the dark um, purpley wine color is a crazy beautiful color. So it doesn't have, it's like a, it's a one of a kind dye lot. It does not have a name. Okay, because that's not enough. I woke up early one morning and instead of getting out of bed and going to work early, I laid in bed and looked at Instagram and I saw Tannis Fiber has a Rocket T, and then as I dug in further, they have a Rocket DK T. So, actually, I'm trying to. I was trying to decide which one I wanted to do. So the Rocket T is a lightweight summer knitted top, where you um, you knit in finger weight and you alternate with mohair, and um, it only it, it only takes a skein or two, depending on the size that you need of each. Um, so then again, like as I was looking, they actually, I don't, haven't purchased the pattern yet, so I can't show you, but they, she had, then she came out with a rocket DK. So you use DK or you use a strand of mohair with a strand of fingering doubled, not doubled, but you know, one of each, and then you knit that way. And so my thought process is, is while I'm working on this fingering weight tee, that's going to take a while because it's finger weight and color, um, color work that maybe I would start the DK, which I, again, still have to buy um, the pattern for, and it would stitch up a little bit faster and kind of give me that, like, okay, I have, like, a knit shirt that I can wear as the weather is getting warmer. Um, so I went to my local needle workshop, 
funny story. So like I go there uh, quite a bit, right? And I went to look at the Emma's yarn and right sitting next to the Emma's yarn is a rocket tee on a mannequin. And they actually used finger weight and then slub for the, instead of the mohair. Um, and it's like, oh, hey, look at that. So they actually were able to do um, like two sizes smaller than what I need. They could do with it. The notes said they just used one hundred gram. I don't. Well, I guess the fingering comes in fifties, but one skein of each fingering weight and um, a strand of a skein of mohair. So um, I think I'm going to be pretty close. So anyways, the DK is made to have sleeves. I don't know how big I want my DK weight to be how long I want the sleeves to be. I don't think I want like a full length sleeve tee. Um, it's just, I liked the style of the t-shirt, wanted it to be a little bit faster, I guess. And just a different, I thought it would be fun to do the mohair to give it like that softness. So anyways, that being said, I picked these two colors or they're the same color. They're Harbor in the Emma's yarn colorway. So when you hold them, I actually haven't done this. Um, but when you hold them together, I have to do, the next step is to do my test swatch to make sure my gauge is right. But that's kind of gives you an idea of how they'll look together. So um, I'm excited to start that. If you're a knitter and you knit with a hand dyed, if I'm using the mohair for hand dyed, which does have some variation in it. Do I need to do some kind of version of like helical knitting or switching up of the skeins as I go so that I don't end up with color pooling or like I've looked at some of these sweaters um, where not with the mohair doubled where people you can clearly see because it's hand dyed yarn not all even this yarn the skeins in the same dye lot don't aren't exactly the same and so you can clearly tell where like one starts like where they stopped one skein and they started the next one so does the mohair mask that or should I really try switching every row tell me what you think about that I think I hope that I will get a some sense of that when I do my color swat my my test swatch but I'm not sure so if you have any thoughts about that let me know um, so I have um, my journey socks that I showed or talked about last time. They're in my work bag in my car um, because if I have a little bit of time over lunch break um, or I use them like on the go if I'm in the car and not driving, like those are easy to pull out and I'm um, on the just the foot part where it's just knitting in a circle. So those are down there. I didn't grab them before I started filming. So I am probably about halfway I put, yeah, I put my first stitch marker in for 10 rows and then did a couple more rows. So I'm almost halfway done with that foot and then I will do the toe and then I will be done. Um, and I'll have a full pair and then probably start another pair because they're my, I really enjoy wearing the pair that I have. So, um, all right, that's all my knitting. Um, I'm a little bit nervous that my knitting has started to like bleed into my cross stitch time. I think I'm finding that balance uh, okay. And really it's about, you know, sit doing working on what you feel like and like what it brings you joy and, and the stress relief and all those kinds of things. But my eyes are just really big for all of the beautiful potential of things that I can create. And I just am working on that good balance of like pacing myself and um, doing working on what I want to work on when I want to work on it. Um, so it's definitely a delicate balance, but I'm happy with where I am so far. Um, part of me thinks I should fin get some more progress on my um, sea glass tee before I start the other one. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. For at least uh, for sure, I have to test swatch and. Um, block that before I can even start on the next one but the color this harbor color it's just gorgeous and it's perfect for me um, so I'm excited for that okay this is way it's like it's gonna be quick I'll be fast somehow I still managed to ramble so if you've hung with me this whole time thank you so much um, I hope you're all doing well um, 
that it's soon to be spring wherever you are or fall if you live in the other hemisphere um, and that just everything is is okay with you um, and I will um, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.